Any car that picks up six Car of the Year awards has to be pretty significant. In 1973, when Audi NSU, that's the upmarket side of the VW empire, launched their 80 in Europe, they certainly set about wooing new front-wheel drive but small car recruits. Now, 18 months later, instead of the 80 GL, for £146 more, they've a new top to their 80 range, the GT. Fortunately, though, this isn't just another GT in name or in skin-deep looks. They've kept the number of go-faster trimmings to an absolute minimum. Merely a front spoiler air dam, which is becoming increasingly fashionable wear these days, a couple of very discreet GT badges indeed, and 5J alloy wheels as opposed to 4.5-inch steel ones. GT, in this car's case, stands for GOES 2. For although the rather long-stroke 1500 overhead camshaft unit has been up to 1600 by increasing the bore, the power output has been boosted by a very impressive 20%. Fortunately, though, I'm pleased to hear, as standard, they've sensibly beefed up the clutch, provided the additional cooling security of not only a larger radiator, but also a finned alloy engine sump and fitted higher third and fourth gearbox ratios. The steering is one of the main features, like the Passat, being self-stabilising, regardless of a blowout or a sudden loss of adhesion on the side. Then, unusually for a front-wheel drive car, it results in very light steering indeed, a boon when parking. While on the move, there's an uncanny lack of the usual excessive understeer. In fact, the handling is really very neutral. It all means that 60 only takes a mere 10 seconds, while, if you had the private road or a licence to spare, four people could travel at 110 miles an hour. The brakes, servo-assisted discs at the front, with ventilated ones available as an optional extra, though for British roads, hardly needed, I'd have thought. As to the interior, well, it's tastefully sporting and unfussy. There's a sport steering wheel and, of course, a rev counter, down there, an oil pressure gauge and a voltmeter, which are not thrown in with the price, they're optional extras, as indeed is a radio, which you don't get included in the price either. Black German mark to this, though, really are only one with this car, the remote gear change mechanism. It's just a bit too remote. Using it, you get the feeling that you're driving a rear-engined car. It's nicely insulated, but just a little bit too vague. For our market, these seat belts come from Toric. They fit on like that and they can be used one-handed. Very convenient in operation and very nicely designed. The upholsteries fitted in the very latest fashionable checkered plaid effect. The front seats are by Recaro. They really do grip you in and they do fully recline. As for colours, well, as you would expect, there are three suitably GT alternatives. One of them is named, perhaps slightly unfortunately, Cliff Green. And then there's Iberian Red and the colour that this car's in, which is called Monza Yellow. Maybe at just £10 over £2,000, it is expensive. Though both here, and in Germany of course, it's cheaper than the rival BMW 2002. In Britain, a 1600 Chrysler Avenger GT works out at over £600 less. However, regardless of price ticket, there'll still be many, no doubt, who are going to be prepared to pay the extra for front-wheel drive and a standard of German finish that's frankly hard to beat.